Good morning. It's Wednesday, Waste Not Wednesday. We're going to be doing a thrifted and IKEA lighting hack um, with one junked colander because it's Waste Not Wednesday. So we're using existing supplies. And if you can't find a colander that you like, we're going to show you how to take an IKEA colander, make it chippy, and turn it into a lighting fixture. Yep. If you like this kind of stuff, make sure you hit the notifications and subscribe button. And if you need DIY supplies, make sure you're hitting up jamierayvintage.com. The products we're using today for paint, you can get them all there. All right, so we got this one last week just thrifting, and it's already been painted. We're not sure what it got painted with, so we don't really want to use it with any kind of food situation. So we're going to make a light fixture out of it. Now, you can do all sorts of stuff all sorts of things with it. This is called the henna, or hemma, hemma, sorry. <laughs> we got these at Ikea. You can get these online from them. You can find them on Amazon. You can also get them from your local hardware store. At Ikea, they tend to be the least expensive. And this is all you need for your light. You can do all kinds of fun hanging lights. And it's got a six foot cord and a switch on it. So we like these ones. Ikea also carries them that can be wired directly into the ceiling. And if you haven't watched yesterday's video, which is, what is that one called? Oh, kitchen something, something or other. Something for the shopping. new house, shop at Ikea. <laughs> Anyways, yesterday's video, scroll back to that one. We actually went to Ikea and you can watch us shop for these as well as these. And we also show you some other options for lighting. So don't miss that out if you haven't watched it. We talk about all kinds of, if you guys don't know, we're buying an old house that we're like, half renovating and then half of it's going to be a new build so we went through and talked about a lot of the things that we're going to be implementing in our design so if you haven't watched it check it out everybody's saying hello um we've got leticia says buenos dias i hopefully i can say that with my braces in maybe i'll take them out if i start having a real bad list hey tammy from sandy all right, so while he's doing that, I'm going to just tell you what I'm going to be doing so that way you guys know. I've got Sweet Pickens Milk Paint in Lantern, and like I said, you can pick this up at jamierayvintage.com. I'm going to mix one part milk paint to one part warm water. I just like to use my protein scoop because it fits nice down in the bag, and we go through a lot of protein here. It doesn't and, really matter what size you use as long as you're one-to-one -one on the water to milk paint. Yeah, so you can use really any size. Um, and then this is the extra bond. Because we're painting this shiny metal, we're going to want to add this. And this is two parts of the mixed up paint to one part of the bond. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Lantern should cover these pretty good. We'll see. Yeah. We've got the heat gun out so that we don't have to wait for them to dry. Maybe mix it a little on the thick side. The thi I know because the thick is going to be hard on this slick surface. Okay. Think? Yeah. All fine. right. So I'm going to go ahead and mix this all up. If you have questions about the milk paint, comment below. And when he's done drilling, I'll answer those. All right. So I just wanted to talk to you real quick. This is a 38 millimeter or also known as inch and a half here in the U.S on the uh, the standard measurement but it's just a uh, basically like a hole saw or a bit and i'm going to it works it's designed for wood and plastics but it works on this thin metal so live here i'm going to see if i can get a hole drilled in i'm going to bring you close so you can watch me struggle on the live video maybe tell them to take their earbuds out where you're drilling if they've got earbuds in it might be getting kind of loud yeah it might be loud so you know we'll see you'll have to judge on your end but I practiced on some other metals earlier today, so I know this works. All right, it's gonna get squeaky, so you might wanna kill that volume. Oh. Hey, All right. take that out to the garage. <laughs> okay, we got a little bit of metal shavings. The holes in here, are binding with my bit. I've got a pretty good outline. I think I'm gonna finish it with some tin snips. So give me just a sec. I'm gonna go run and get those. Hey Zeb, what hurry are you with doing? the hurry with the paint, Jamie. They need to watch you mix okay, it. Okay, sorry. Well, they get my back side. That's my good side. I'm gonna try one more time on this end here. So uh, no, take the outside. No, stop. <laughs> All right, it's I'm gonna not cut funny. It. I'm gonna cut when you it. do these, take them outside. <laughs> Nobody wants to hear that. Okay, so you've got milk paint, warm water in here. Uh, you should use an immersion blender, but uh, I don't have one because I broke mine. Caitlin's going to be getting me hers. 
eventually. Maybe tomorrow when she comes, she'll bring it. If you don't have an immersion blender, you can just use a fork or a whisk. You just have to stir it a little bit and it's gonna be the consistency of a melted milkshake. So I'm just gonna be stirring this for a little bit because I don't have my blender and I wanna make sure it's nice and mixed up. Then I'll add the bond. I was worried about lot, this. So we're gonna need to paint some other things. I was worried about this with the uh, the holes grabbing my uh, my bit there, but it got half of it done, so no big deal. Can you put milk paint over chalk paint? Yep, you can. I do it all the time. Um, if you want it to not chip through the chalk paint, make sure you seal that chalk paint and wait 48 hours. And even then, sometimes it'll chip through it. But we have a video where I did the buffet in my bedroom, so just search Jamie Ray Vintage Buffet. And we use DIY paint under the flower sack, and I have bits of apothecary peeking through my uh, milk paint and it's really pretty nails on our chalkboard i can't believe it i warned them i warned them before warning I... doesn't take away from you can't unhear that <laughs> i'm actually not bothered by the sound so i'm immune to that I... well women are sensitive and that's our chief demographic i have like plus Essentially, 10 immunity. all these people there are bosses and you just hurt their ears <laughs> without you guys we don't have a job <laughs> all right so this cuts out really easily the whole saw actually did a pretty good job at running that in just be careful because now it's got kind of some sharper edges oh this edges. is so cute Bronwyn from South Africa opened an Airbnb and wanted all furniture and goodies recycled or upcycled I've done all of them learning from you check it out Airbnb Benoni South Africa Olive Anon I want to check it out we were actually at the thrift store at DI the other day and the, the manager there was from South Africa, so that's kind of fun. All right. Denise says she's good. Don't worry. But Debbie says, yeah, it's a sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got a little bit of jagged edge. I probably should go get gloves. Go get gloves, people. Go get gloves. Be safe. Yeah. You know what's funny? We've been watching HGTV a lot because we're trying to get inspiration for the house that we're going to be working on. And all of these HGTV stars and their crews do not wear personal protection equipment. There's no hard hats. There's no safety glasses. There's hardly even gloves. Occasionally like, we'll see safety glasses and things. Yeah, but I mean, they're like demoing houses and they're not wearing respirators and they're like these old houses and I'm like, that's so irris... Oh, I can open this. I need to open that. I'm one. sure they get lots of fun letters about it. It's so irresponsible. I'm like, you can't do Boy. that. In fact, if you guys stick around, I'll show you my uh, hard hat that I just Jamie's getting all kinds of prep. In the family, Jamie is known as Safety Jamie because she worries about all the things safe, especially with like children. She does not like to be hurt at all in any way, shape, or form. Stubbing well, does her toe. anybody like to get hurt? Well, stubbing I her mean, toe. I mean, nobody says, ooh, I got hurt. She's plenty tough, but stubbing her toe may require an afternoon watching TV. Um, when I got stung by a wasp a few years ago, I was done for the day. I don't like to get hurt. That's true. Okay, so I just had to pull off some of those jagged edges, and now this is just screwing right down in. It's actually a pretty tight fit with that inch and a half. Dina says that I'm the mom. That's why. Yep. Also, if you didn't see, Dino, we did get your package of your milk glass. It's super cute. I'm going to decorate with it in the new house. And then you just pop this here on. Maybe. And now that is secure. Okay, now we need a light bulb. We also got I think these. I made, made it thin, but that's okay. We'll let it sit for a minute. It'll thicken we up. We also got these from Ikea. I don't have any more room in my cup, so however it's mixed. So this is going to be a pretty fast DIY. You could also do the same thing. Let's say you had a lamp and it was already in place and you just wanted to make this a lampshade, drill a little bit smaller hole so that you can fit that little topper down on there and you'll be good on that. Okay. You know that painting this is gonna be a hot mess because they're so slick. No, it'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So sorry you guys had to hear the screeching sounds. I am sorry, I, I, I care about your ears. Oh, look, the light was already on. <laughs> Ta-da! Look how cute that is. So what Maybe I would... Maybe take off the DI sticker on the side. The, the, the caution sticker. sticker? No, the DI sticker. Oh, on You this. can leave the caution because we're going to sell it. We need that. Um, there's like a oh, price gotcha. tag on there. So another fun thing to do is you could get the kind that plug in to your, uh, your light switch um, that are like pre-wired for that. They don't have the plug on the end like this one, they'll just be bare wires. 
so that you could wire right into wherever you had like an overhead lighting situation going on. Like for example, if you want to know how to do that, I actually have a video on it on this lamp here. That one there, how to wire that. So Ikea also sells this, a kit that has a cover plate like that. And it's just bare wires. It doesn't have a plug on the end. So if you wanted to hang it's it. it's on sale right now until the end of August. Yeah. I want to try to find something because the, the light fixtures I want for the house, for the main house, are like $60 a piece. So I would love to find um, something that I could create for the main house, like duplicate. So we got to do some Ikea shopping and see if there's any like trash cans we could flip upside down and turn into light fixtures or what that would give me a similar look for like a lot less. Well, also another thing you could do is like run these through a piece of old salvage wood or something. You just run this through and then you've got, you can hang like three at once. That would be more like that chandelier situation. And then you could hang mo even more of these, but it's just kind of a fun light. I don't know how much this is gonna chip, but we'll see. Ah. We can always use wet distress to coerce it. If it doesn't chip, it'll be like a fun black color. Yeah. I want. I didn't want to chintz on the extra bond. I'm really not sure how much I put in. I filled the cup up. But yeah, so that's how hard that lamp DIY is. Just go get yourself the kit from a hardware store or Ikea has them real cheap and on sale right now. And you can get a Black & Decker dr drill for under $20. Yep, if you don't have a drill, you can even rent a drill. I think they're like three or four, maybe $5 for like a don't whole day. Don't rent a drill, just buy one. <laughs> yeah, but just get one. You're gonna need it for one. like a myriad of other things. I'm painting the inside because there were drippy dews on the inside. So yeah, so you could do, once you get your hole drilled, lampshade or, do we even have a lamp that we could use this with? These would be cool, kind of, um, if you guys you have seen... You can hang them on the ceiling, you could swag them. Yep. If you've seen our bedroom makeover, we have those lamps, those lamps that are hanging off of the corbels on those old doors oh, yeah, over our can... nightstands. This would also be a great solution for that. And this colander was like two bucks at the thrift store. Yeah, this these colanders were twelve ninety five a piece. I like them a little bit better because they're... The shape is the fun. The shape is fun. So... How much would you sell this for down at our shop? I don't know. How much was the lamp kit? So the lamp kit was seven dollars. Like thirty bucks. And then $5. this is two dollars. So and then the bulb is like another three or four. So twenty nine ninety five probably. Twenty nine ninety five. All right, let's start drying that. It's gonna get real hot because it's metal. Oh, sorry. We got our kids Sometimes. plus the neighborhood kids. Well, all kinds of situations happening. All right. Okay, that would be see. cool over like this too. If you Jane, I'm painting a colander from Ikea. So if you can't find a thrifted colander, you can buy them new. This one was $12.95. And they do ship. So they've got that. Can you cut the plug off and wire it directly? You could, but they you sell... Could, I just get the kit. You could, they sell a kit that just you wire directly and it has a fun uh, covered cord. Zeb, can you show us how you did the opening? Cindy, if you watch the replay, he did that. It was really loud and it hurt everybody's ears. So probably on these ones, he's going to wire run them. To the garage. He'll run them to the garage. So you have to watch the replay because I, I don't know that my ears want to hear that again. That was pretty bad. Basically, however you can get a hole. I mean, you could probably just take these side cutters and do it or some tin snips. Yeah, especially since there's holes in the bottom to get started. Yeah, in. it already has holes in there. So, all right, I'm going to heat gun this. Okay, we'll show, we'll, if it doesn't chip, we'll show them how to kind of get the chippy situation. And I'm not worried about full coverage because we're going to take some of the paint off. So I'm just going to get it on there however I can. Um, yeah. Uh, Lisa says this is an interesting shape for a colander. I think it is. I think it's really fun. And if you want it to be more modern and not look like a colander, you could totally cut these handles off with uh, tin snips or metal clippers or a grinder, and then you would have a little bit more of a uniform look. They almost are the shape oh. of the lamps that you like that we are thinking of getting for the house. Yeah, they're just smaller. My settings, my settings just said the same thing, so we must be thinking the same thing. Let's see, um, Jamie, what is that your painting? Okay, Debbie wants to know where we're at in the house. So we have conditional loan approval. I sent in a couple of things that they asked for and they're reviewing those. 
and we have ordered the appraisal. So we're hoping by the end of the week, the beginning of next week, we should have more final clarity and, and loan documents to sign. Next week goes the 4th of July, and in the United States, that's a big holiday, so we gotta get them signed before then, because nobody will be working on Thursday. And there will probably be limited people working on Friday, because people like to take the rest of the weeks off. Yeah, you, especially like, uh, it's like a bank holiday, where uh, people just take the whole weekend, make it a long weekend. And I'm painting with, if you're just tuning in, I'm painting with Sweet Pickens Lantern with Extra Bond, and you can get that at JamieRayVintage.com. And I'm just using our little Palm Pro brush. Oh, you're painting the inside too, huh? Yeah, because you get drips, so it wouldn't look good if you didn't paint the inside. Oh, gotcha. Because they, they drips through the hole, there's really no way to solve that. My cue is white swan and I use flower sack. So my little lazy hack when I don't feel like doing four coats of milk paint, because that's what it takes with uh, the white colors, is I will paint things with DIY and then put the flower sack over the top. Sometimes you don't get the exact same chipping, but it's a heck of a lot faster. So I do like two coats of DIY and one coat of flower sack. And if I don't get the chipping I want, I usually wet this dress. Or you can do four coats of flour sack, whatever floats your boat. Whites just don't have a lot of pigment. So like this black, you can see I'm basically getting a single coat coverage. If you wanted perfect, you'd probably have to do two because it's so slick. But I'm getting really good coverage with just this one coat here. And then that's because black has more pigment in it, so. Well, and this wasn't perfectly shiny. Like it's kind of like a brushed metal. Yeah, but it was slick, I'll tell you that. That's why you need the extra bond. Okay, I'm gonna, there's a few spots. There's that, a couple little spots. A couple streaky dudes. Sometimes it gets streaky when it's shiny. So stop doing that one, let me just, whoo, hot. Just wanna make sure. Yeah, don't touch it, it's hot metal. I got it. We just talked about how safe I was. Okay, that's good. Here. Do, do that. I mixed up way too much milk paint. Here's the thing with milk paint. I'm gonna need to use this in the next few hours because it doesn't keep, especially after you've had extra bonder in it, it'll start getting gelatinous. If it gets gelatinous while you're using it, like you have a long project, you can add extra water and use an immersion blender and usually extend the life of it. But you really should only mix what you want. Thanks, Julie, I like this color too. This shirt has like uh, some stains on it, so. Well, I'm painting in it, but I was thinking about getting some more jewel tones. So, Kathy, these are the ones that we got from Ikea the other day. She said they're almost like the ones from Ikea. They are. This one is thrifted. Okay, so this is a good question. Morgan says, I don't have a shop to sell in. Do the repainted finished items sell on Facebook Marketplace for a profitable price? So before we had a retail space, it's only been two years that we've been there, we sold everything out of our home through Facebook Marketplace marketplace and yard sale pages and we absolutely made a living off of it um, i didn't do a lot of smaller things because it wasn't worth like chasing somebody down to smell sell one small item um, i would only do them usually for markets and then if i had leftovers i would actually go live on facebook from my facebook page and do like a live sale and then that's how i would sell all the odds and ends but mostly i sold furniture before we had a shop Oh, she said, like the lights we looked at. Yeah, these do look like the lights we looked at on a smaller scale. Yumiko says, I love the handles. I'm so happy you're using milk paint. I have a lot left from the last to sale. Yeah, I do love milk paint. I'm not gonna lie, I'm a little lazy, so I don't always wanna mix it up. But every time I use it, I'm like, oh, I should use that some more. Well, it's... It's got some really cool properties that you just can't get with other paints. Even if you try to force the like the DIY paint to crackle with a heat gun or a blow dryer, when it's still wet, it, you still won't get that exact same look that the milk paint can give you. Lisa, we are using um, Lantern Milk Paint with Extra Bond that's from our website at JamieRayVintage.com. Um, Cindy, it's not too personal. We're um, setting aside about $100,000 for the renovation and remodel. The addition is gonna be quite large. It might not be enough. 
So we'll probably, over the next six months, pull from our monthly budget and put back into it. And there's already a few things we've talked about that if we don't get brand deals on them, which we're actively looking into, um, that we will just, you know, if we have to, we'll just paint some plywood floors and stamp them and seal them really good until we can put tile in. We may stamp a backsplash or stencil backsplash. So for like, like the bathrooms, if we have to do like the plywood flooring, because I'm actually pretty sold on the plywood flooring. I've seen a bunch of people do it. I've seen different ways that it looks really nice and we're planning on painting the floors anyway. So it, it's not going to matter if there's actual hardwood under there because we're painting the floors. Um, but one of the things we're thinking about doing is if like, let's say in the bathroom, we've got a, we don't want necessarily painted wood floors in the bathroom with kids spilling water. What I'll do is I'll do a coat of epoxy over the top of the or paint. Or like a marine varnish or yeah. something. We'll do something that'll hold up well to water. Cause if once you got epoxy on there, sometimes that can be an eighth of an inch thick if you do a real thick coat. And, so this is just water, I'm wet distressing. Sorry. And that'll seal the water out really, really well. Because that bond stuck it so good to this <laughs> that I'm using wet distress to kind of bring back the chippy. Um, but do know that when you activate the chippy, it then becomes kind of hard to control. So somebody had a question, they did a market, they painted everything with wax and it started to melt. Um, if you're going to have things outside and it is very hot and especially at a market, I would not use wax because it does not hold up well to extreme heat. No. And even though it may only be like a hundred degrees outside, it could be, um, it could be more than that in the sun. I can't, in the sun, sorry, I have braces. Um, so do use a liquid top coat. So big top, sweet pickens top coat, use all water base. You don't want to have to worry about yellowing, um, but don't use wax if it's going to be outside. Yeah. And wax is a great sealer, but what happens is it's almost like putting water on paint. It's going to reactivate that and basically make it soft again. Think of like warm butter. Yeah. <laughs> Well, or like a candle, like if you stuck, it's candle is wax. So you stick it in there, that's what's gonna happen. Yep. Um, let's see. Have you seen the laminate you stick down that looks like wood? Yeah, we actually have used it. If you look up our bathroom renovation on this channel, we've used it, it's pretty good. It's still a little spendy. Yeah. And if we do like a flooring with the plywood and with the epoxy or whatever, um, we can just tile over the top of it. Whereas if we do a peel and stick laminate, we'd have to peel it all up. So you can see, it's funny, it's kind of like shrinking because the paint was hot, that extra bond. Like when I wet distress, look right there. It's getting all chippy. All right, this is good. Okay, I'll let you take this one back there. Now this will need to be sealed. I would not suggest using wax liquid top coat yeah, only. Because the light will get it hot. It might make it more chippy, just something to keep in mind, but do not seal these with. So this one, I did not dry as much. I didn't get it as so hot it as that one. So I left it a little tacky, so you might be able to get some pa more paint off of this one. Yeah, we're trying to replicate the authentic chippy look on the old colander, which I actually just think somebody spray painted it and it chipped off and they tried to put it I don't know that it was actually spray painted at all it might just be old and used a lot and originally painted white because the inside has no signs of spray paint i'm gonna stop with the um wet distress because is it starting to get chunky i don't know it's gonna Does look good i'm gonna go drill the epoxy it look pretty good we'll let you know i think we could we've got the cubano stamp from iod i'm gonna so, go drill this okay zeb's gonna go outside and drill you're welcome <laughs> Um, and we're, I was also thinking that I could develop a stencil that would be a good tile size for a smaller size that would be good for a backsplash. So I'm going to be working on that. I painted something white three weeks later it turned yellow. So a couple of things. It could be bleed through, but usually that happens right away or it could be what you sealed it with. So if you use any sealers that are oil based, they are going to yellow. If you used a water based sealer and it yellowed, that means you had bleed through, so you're going to need to use a spray can of shellac and then repaint, which is a pain in the bum. So I'm sorry. I wish I had a better option. Um, let's see. And I've also heard about people taking the liquid top coat and putting a few drops of white paint in it, and that helps it not yellow. I haven't tried it yet. Um, Tammy, these colanders came from Ikea. 
So fun fact, I just ran the drill backwards so that the teeth didn't catch and it wore a hole right through this thin metal like that. So I just good, drilled the whole thing. Tip. So just run your drill backwards so it doesn't the teeth don't catch and it'll be enough friction to cut through this metal. So Jenner, General Finish's milk paint is not a true milk paint. I have used it. This is all true milk paints are going to be in powder form because once you mix it, it goes bad because milk. Um, General Finishes is more like a satin uh, acrylic is what I would consider it. It's got a little bit of sheen to it and it doesn't chip this way. Judy says we should have an HGTV show. I agree. And let me tell you something cute. So <laughs> we have neighbors that live down the street. They have five kids. The mom is actually my daughter's cheer coach and I work out with them at Orange Theory quite often. They don't always go at the same time as me. And she was telling me that they were watching Chip and Joanna and her little boy Easton. Easton's in, going into fourth grade. Just looked up and said, uh, I don't really like Chip and Joe. I like Zeb and Jamie better. <laughs> Apparently they uh, really wanted some YouTube neighbors. And my friend was said, well, the Rays are YouTubers. So they started checking out our channel. And so the Finlandsons have been, uh, have been watching <laughs> us. On it probably YouTube. doesn't hurt that we've taught most of them in Sunday school. They're the cutest family. <laughs> They're the best dressed family of five kids I've ever seen. Their mama <laughs> takes good care of them. Um, LOL, we're all going to be selling these in our booths. Yeah, it's going to be They're colander. so easy. They're so easy. Like someone's like, hey, do a video on it. And I was like, And they don't take much right. paint. Like I use two scoops of milk paint and I use exactly this much if you're using a darker color. This much in my cup, which means I've got all this milk paint I'm going to have to. Um, you can use DIY paint. I feel like if you get the milk paint to stick with the bond, it's a little bit better on metal but you can also use the DIY. This is probably going to take you an extra coat of the DIY because you got to get that first coat on there that's going to look terrible and then do a couple extra coats. Yeah, but Zeb's going to have to unscrew that so we can probably seal them. Oh, yeah. I'm just showing them what it looks like. We'll, I'll Although, spray seal these. Honestly, I don't even know. Like Once that dries, I don't know that you would need to seal it. Yeah, this, so this, like people are touch it. this milk paint's going to get really cured over the next 30 days and not go anywhere. <laughs> yeah, for sure. All right, now I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go do that one, and okay. then I'm gonna go grab my big salvage piece of wood, and we'll pretend like we ran these through there, and I'll show you how to make oh, like so a big chandelier it. thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, stay tuned. We got more coming. What are they made from? These are colanders. So this one is a colander that we painted from IKEA, and this is just a thrifted colander we picked up for a couple bucks at the local thrift store. Can you turn on the lamps? I'll have Zeb do that in a second. Of course, you should sell a book on Amazon too. We're actually writing a book. If you guys are channel members, you get chapters every month. Um, and when we're all done at the end of the year, we'll have 12, 12 chapters. We'll, we're gonna edit it, and then we will be publishing it that, that next year. And I would assume through Amazon, it's usually the easiest way. Okay. <laughs> Caitlin says email HGTV and tell them about us. Apparently Caitlin has also done that. <laughs> you know, Jamie wants a show super bad, but I'm very happy and content with our YouTube channel. I feel like it's more intimate and personal. We and I don't like people telling me what to do. Yeah, like, you're not the boss. I mean, you didn't really wet the stress as much. I didn't wet the stress out at all. Oh, well, what the heck are you doing? I got a rag out and then I went to drilling because you were done with that one. Oh. <laughs> you, somebody wants to see the lights turn on. Yeah, I'll turn them on. It's not going to really show up well because it's pretty bright in here, um, but we'll, You'll have to we'll use show a little you. bit of your imagination. Maybe I'll turn the lights overhead off, but the camera adjusts, so yeah, it might be a thing. Just careful that it's got kind yeah, of I'm sharp not going to stick my hand in there. Yeah, just be careful with that. All right. You know, you say I'm safety Jamie, but our very first video I spray painted in my kitchen. That's like the... We get the most hate mail on that video. I was like, what were we thinking? I don't know. We're hurrying and getting our first video We're just done. trying to make our first YouTube video. We were so excited. I feel like that was our YouTube puberty. You know, we're just like figuring out life. All right, I'm going to go grab that piece of wood. All right, Dad's going to go grab a board, and then he's just going to show you how he would mount these to make a fun light fixture. Chippy. Zeb used a drill with a hole bit 
I'll bring it back so you can He'll see. He'll bring it back. Or you can watch the replay if you want to watch him do it. It was pretty loud, so. So I'm not actually going to do this on video because I have other plans. I just kind of wanted to show you guys kind of a, the concept of it. I'll go get the drill bits here. All right, that's going to show you a concept of what you could do if you were going to hang this. And you could use, we're using the light fixtures that have the switches because those seem to sell easier. Not everybody wants to wire stuff into their um, ceiling, but Ikea does sell light kits that wire directly in the ceiling. Okay, so we found this particular piece of salvage. It's from the Clifton House, and if you haven't watched that video, just search Jamie Ray Vintage Salvage Clifton House. Um, if Caitlin's on here, she could drop the link to that video, and you can actually watch us tear down. We had to tear down an old building because the city required it, and we salvaged as much as possible, and we've been using that salvage for a few years now. It's, it's, it's like on its last leg. It, the salvage is almost gone. I don't know if this would stain your clothes washer. It has it in ours. I usually, um, with now not with the oil rags, those get disposed of differently. We're going to do a video on that soon, but with the paint rags, they all go together and then get washed. And usually I'll like rinse them out pretty good before I throw them in the washing machine. All right, so we've got our three lamps here. We also have a video using the other half of this to make a planter. Did you tell them about that? Yeah, we have a planter video on a Waste Not Wednesday, and you can watch us turn a similar one like this into a planter. It's on our back porch. It actually, the flowers are dead. I need to. Okay, so this is the whole saw bit that I've been using. Okay, just a second. Caitlin, drop that video in comments. If you're watching this not live, that will have it in the description. Okay. So this is the whole saw bit that I used. It's an inch and a half and works perfectly to cut holes in things, whether it's a colander or wood or whatever for these, these light kits that you can get. And you, we get ours at Ikea, but you can get them anywhere. They sell them all over the place. This is a 3 8 spade bit that I use to drill long holes in uh, candlesticks so that we can turn candlesticks into lamps. Or and into I just- salvage porch posts. Yep, and I just run the electrical down through there. You can use them for tons of stuff. So on this, I would get the other kits because I would do this light fixture so that I could wire it into the chandelier. If you are just joining, I showed earlier our chandelier and we have a video on that too. But so what I do is just run this down through wherever I was gonna put a lamp hanging and then I would just run the wire up through that and then wire it into the ceiling and then obviously hang this with the correct support and things probably to a stud because this probably weighs about 35, 40 pounds. But that's how you could make a cool lamp. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold it you up. I wanna see him lit up. And so Jamie's like... gonna drape this. Yeah, we'll light I'm gonna, him up. I'm gonna, I'm gonna drape it. She, she's gonna drape the lamps over so you can kind of get a sense of what it would look like. If you're local to Utah and you want a body, is there gonna be at Molly's? Just a little commercial. <laughs> if you don't wanna make your own. So I would probably arrange them black, black, white, white. Yeah. And maybe not all the same heights. Do I have a bulb? I don't even have a bulb in these ones. Hang on. We'll only be able to light up two because I only have an outlet, two outlets over here on this side. All right, we're going to make it happen. Where's my lid to my bond? Oh, and just so you know, you can't buy bond in a gallon unless you're a dealer. And since I sell the paint, I get to buy it in the gallon What's size. What's it come, 16 ounces? Yeah, it comes in a pint. A really? Pint. I mean, honestly, I've had that thing forever. It lasts me like six months. So. We actually don't use extra bond in much stuff. And when we, we do, I usually don't add much. We leave it pretty chippy. Denise says, I would be broke if I lived in Utah. I wish you would. It's been slow at the shop. I've got to go change things up and take some of my own advice. We did a live yesterday for our channel members and it was all about what to do when it's slow and I was like, dang it, I need to take my own advice. <laughs> oh, throwing stuff. All right, we're going to hold it up in just a sec here and turn some lights on. We have not sealed these, Tammy, but we will use uh, Sweet Pickens top coat because the wax will not hold up to the heat, so waxing them would not be a smart idea. All right, that Jamie. metal will get hot. So what am I hold doing? those right there. I'm going to see if I can hold this All up right. high enough to drape it. 
Okay, so obviously the lights would be coming through, and you could stagger them however you wanted to, and they'd be coming through the center, and you Hold could even fire. you could even Hold bring them fire. close. I can't. It's out of the video. No, pull this so we can see the dangling. There you go. Ta-da! <laughs> it would look a lot cooler with where it all put together and not draped with all the wiring. The wiring would go through the board. <laughs> all right, now you guys are good. All right, do we have any more junk to paint? Um, we have lots we could bring in. I also wanted to show you guys, look, I love it when I take apart old buildings and I find signatures from the builders. The guy that made this signed that up. Or gal, could have been a gal. All right, you talk to him for a second, I'll see. I don't think we have any more junk. We might have to We have all kinds of stuff out there. It just depends on how big you want to go. Uh, well, we have to just paint. First. I'm going to look at comments here so right. so the lighting is pretty simple and easy you guys can do that like it's easy if you don't have like fancy salvage you can get a big like i'm not gonna hit you always worry about that i know exactly where you are <laughs> anyway um you could get like a uh uh four by four or a four by six and that'll give you kind of a big beam and run holes through that paint it all up how you want all cool cut the edges off it's it's awesome what you can do with it. Well, and in our bedroom, we have corbels. We already mentioned this, but if just, you have to use your imagination. I'll do like I do at church. Close your eyes and imagine what I'm saying. Is our room clean? We could show them. No, I don't think our room is clean. We're, we won't be showing them that. So <laughs> old door with a corbel on top, and then you take the light fixture, and then you don't have to do any electrical, anything fancy, and you just drill a, like a well for that cord to hang in, and then you hang the colander down and then you put the cord on the other side of the door and plug it into the wall. That's what we have on both sides of our bed. And we have these really cool light fixtures and we didn't have to do any electrical in the wall and it's a great way to have a pendant lamp next to your bed. So another idea, and I mean, we, we get people asking us all the time, like, where did we do all that? And if you need corbels, you can pick those up at jamierayvintage.com. We too. sell them. We actually have a fun idea. Do we want to tell them about no, our fun idea? Not, not tell us for sure. She doesn't want to tell you till we launch it. So. Now he says you don't, they don't care if our room is clean. There's like laundry at the end of our bed and baskets overflowing. There could be like <laughs> underwear. Watch our room tour. Any of our room tours in the last little bit that we've done on our, our master bedroom makeover. There's a whole playlist on it. It has the lights and exactly how I made them in those videos. How do you find houses that are being torn down? I don't know, they find us. We've never actively really searched for them. When people find out what you do, usually they'll let you know. Owners um, of these buildings have contacted us and been like, hey, you want some of this stuff? It's getting torn down and the more you take, the less I have to pay for at the dump. So <laughs> that's how right. we do it. Okay, I think that's it. If you guys do want to see our master bedroom, just search Jamie Ray Vintage Master Bedroom, and there's a bunch of videos, and you'll for sure see them because we've had them in there. I think we've pretty much had them in there since we started videoing. All right. It's been a long time. All right, I guess that's it. So that's going to show you in case you want to look on This is the, light, the kit. light kit. It's a Hema light. Yep. And it's plugged, and it has a switch on it. You can also, like I said, get the ones without the plug. They're different, but... I saw that whole kit and you can do whatever you want with lighting with those. All right, guys, make sure that if you haven't already hit subscribe, thumbs up, comment with questions you have on lighting. We're happy to answer them and go to jamierayvintage.com for all your paint and DIY needs. Boom. We got some fun stuff coming up, so stay tuned. She won't let me make announcements, but we'll, we'll be doing it. I'll make There's it happen. There's so many things going on. All right, guys, catch you later. All right, bye, guys.